in this video we are going to implement the cursors so far in the transact sql block we have written a select statement which was returning us a single value and that single value can be stored by a variable but if we are in a requirement that we want to write a select statement which may return a multiple records so multiple values will not be handled by a single variable at a time so for that we will use these cursors as it is used to retrieve data from result set one row at a time so this is what we call the fetching means there will be a result set generated and this cursor will point one record at a time from this result set whenever i want to do some operations with these result set records individually i can actually go for these cursors as it is used when we need to update records in a database table on row by row basis at a particular time when we are doing the fetching as we have a result set and this cursor is pointing a one record at a time so we can actually query this fetch status which will return the status of the fetching made by this cursor if it returns a zero that means we actually get the data from the result set and we can proceed by reading it and can do any operation what we want but if there is no data left in the result set this fetch status will return a minus 1 so when we will start working with this cursors there are number of stages will go on let's discuss them first is declare declare cursor is something like when we will declare a cursor you will bind a select statement along with this cursor as you can see it is declared that simply means that cursor is not a database object as the database object used to be created but here we are declaring it like a variable next is open when this open stage will be there the select statement will be in executed internally and the result set will be generated fetch means you are start pointing one by one so this fetch will do all the fetching and we need to do it iteratively means because there could be a number of records so we will have to perform this fetch operation multiple times then close close means it will your cursor will no longer be available for fetching and once you are done you can call the deallocate so that all the resources that's been occupied by your cursor will be deallocated so let's see practically how can we work with the cursors so in this implementation of cursors first of all we are declaring three variables for storing the emp id name and salary of the employees and then after we are declaring the cursor as in the life cycle we have already discussed like declaring is the first phase first part of the cursor so here emp cursor is the name of my cursor make sure you are not putting the at the rate symbol before the name of the cursor and then cursor for telling the type for the select statement so apart uh, uh, means by the time you are defining this cursor you are declaring this cursor you will bind the select statement with this cursor so whenever we will deal with this particular cursor we will be dealing with the data returned by this select statement and what we are doing here it's very straightforward i'm finding the employee id first name and salary of all those employees from dbl employees table who are working in department 30 now once it is declared i'll open it so this is open emp cursor so as i said by the time you will you will open this cursor the result set will be generated in the database and when we will start fetching that like here you can see fetch next from emp cursor that is the name of the cursor again and when you will do that the first record from the result set will be fetched so that record or any record in that result set would be having emp id first name and salary column in the data now if you will start fetching fetching means only one record will be read at a time so for that particular record and for in this case the first record when you will fetch the first record the 
EMP ID, first name and salary will be assigned to the EMP ID name and sal variables. There may be a situation like there is no employee working in department 30. So the result set will be blank. And which is going to tell us that? This fetch status. If I will not get anything, as I said, it will return me minus 1. But if it is 0, that means successfully I got something. And since I got something, I can print that as well. So here what I'm doing, inside this loop, I'm just printing the name and salary of that particular employee. And once I'm done, I'm fetching it again. Because it is an iterational process and every time I'll have to move forward. So in this loop body also, I will have to write the same fetch statement. So fetch next from EMP cursor into these three variable in the very same sequence as you have made the select statement. So again, it is doing the fetch and the loop is ended. So it will again come this line in this particular line. If the fetch status is successful, again, this loop will execute. So as soon as the fetch fetching is done, this loop will get terminated as fetch status will return you minus one and this condition will be false. And after that, I can simply close this cursor to make this cursor uh, unusable. And after that, if I, I'm sure, like I'm not going to use this cursor again, I'm not going to open this cursor again, I can deallocate all the resources occupied by this EMP cursor. So here I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just printing the name and salary. Uh, so let's concatenate that as we have done earlier. And when I will execute that, it will show me the output like this. So there are four employees working in department 30. Now, if you want to do some conditional updations, for example, on the basis of this salary, current salary, I want to do the updations as well. So let's check out that how we can do. So now I'll not print anything right here. And inside this, what I'll do is, first of all, I will check the salary, the current salary. So if salary is greater than or equal to 50,000, begin and all right, so set at the rate cell is equal to at the rate cell plus five. I'm just making some random changes uh, so that you will be you can easily uh, check like whether the updation is correct or not. All right, so if salary is greater than fifty thousand for that particular employee, I will set it that again. So far, I have not executed the update statement. I am just changing the value of the variable. And similarly, I can say else begin and set cell is equal to cell plus 10. So you can see all are uh, having zero in their ends. All right. So if there is any changes, we can find that easily. So now before fetching, I will execute this update statement update TBL employees set salary is equal to add the rate cell where EMP ID because I want to make the changes in that particular record only and that is why I have searched that EMP ID as well in my cursor example. So let's I have already updated it. All right. And now we'll print that again. So print. All right. So again, the same example is here. Let's execute that. All right. So here you can see it is earning 10 more because they are less than 50,000 and he is earning more than 50,000. So only five amount got increased. And if you'll find that in the table, the changes will be there in table as well. So let's confirm that from TBL employees where department is equal to 30. So for all these employees, 
this is the updated salary so this is how you can start working with the concept of cursors in SQL Server